name is Ingrid Kripo. I am a puppeteer and I'm going to talk about finger puppets. The wonderful thing about finger puppets is that they are imaginary and concrete at the same time. And whenever you're dealing with imagination in children, in fact, even with grown-ups, it's important to welcome the children to use their imagination. It's very easy for a person just not to go there. Uh, if you've ever, I had a bad professor once who was in a classroom of creative dramatics, just said to us, all right, be creative, without any introduction, without any inviting and welcoming the, us into using our imagination, and we all bombed, we fell flat. It's important that you welcome the children into using these puppets by showing them, model what you can do with these wonderful little creatures. Now, because it is such a simple puppet, the voice is very important. Yeah, so even though I'm little, I got a big voice, because guess what, I'm a T-Rex. And it's important that you look at your puppet so that you believe that it's real. And the children will pay attention to their own puppets when they have it and see how they're moving. Now, the basic walk for any puppet that's a, for a preschool age group is this. That's the simplest way. Now running, you can run really fast and you can go whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. So I show some of these things to children. Now, of course, T-Rex, I want to eat. Because T-Rex is always hungry, as we know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I think that's enough of you because uh, I'm afraid you're going to bite somebody here. So let's go with a frog. Now, what would a frog do, of course? Frogs have to be able to hop. So simple directions that a frog can do. And of course, talking is simply just, yep, I'm a frog, and that's how I talk. I move my head. Now, some finger puppets are upright like that. Some finger puppets are horizontal. This finger puppet is a baby dinosaur. And it's from, I, I use a, a dinosaur book, and I, we create a story about how a dinosaur lives. And this one moves like this, because he has four legs. Or he can run too, whoosh, very fast. It's hard to turn around and go the other way, whoosh, but you can. This puppet is made out of the tip of a glove that's been snipped off and decorated. Other finger puppets can be created so simply. You need a tube of some kind. It can be a PVC tube, it can be a cardboard tube. This is foam wrapped around my finger and glued. Then you put something for a head. This is a ping pong ball. Ping pong ball now, nowadays come in lots of different colors. There's an orange one. The frog had a green ping pong ball. Or you can use a fuzz ball, a pom pom, like my little blue kitty here. And then just decorate the foam ball, or the fuzz ball. Now, uh, it doesn't matter what story you do with this. This is one of my favorite stories. It's the new version of The Mitten by Jim Aylesworth. This is the rabbit who is freezing cold and says, Whoa, my toes are cold as ice. Ooh, that mitten looks so cozy. Warm toes would be so nice. And of course, then goes into the mitten. Lots of fun story to do. This is Pierre by Maurice Sendak. There once was a boy named Pierre who would only say, I don't care. Listen, my friend, and you'll find at the end a suitable moral lies there. So there are any number of puppet shows you can do with a few simple finger puppets.